While the new Boeing 777X took its first flight in early 2020, the aircraft is not expected to enter service until 2023 at the earliest. However, despite delays, it is one of the most anticipated new models in some time. With high capacity and efficient twin-engine operation, it promises a modern replacement for retiring 747s and serious competition for the A350. But what makes the 777X different from its predecessors? And what exactly have been the holdups keeping it from the skies? The Boeing 777 has been the best-selling wide-body aircraft to date. Launched in 1994, it has seen several variants over the years. The 777X is the next member, the third generation, of the 777 family. While it has much in common with its predecessors, it also will introduce some key new features. Crucially, it retains the metal fuselage of the 777, rather than switching to a new composite structure, as Airbus has done with the A350. Fuselage width has been increased by around 4 inches over the 777 through thinner walls and more efficient insulation, giving a bit of extra space for seating. But wings, engines and avionics have been significantly changed. The 777X was first proposed in 2011 with a target flying date of 2018. The original 777 filled the gap between the 767 and the 747 and the 777X was originally envisioned as a larger, more efficient successor to the 777-300ER. Until recently, it had been marketed along with the 747, right up to the new 747-8. But with the 747 no longer part of Boeing's offering, the plane maker needed a new aircraft to target the high-capacity end of the market. Sticking with the 777 made sense at the time, and it still does. Four-engine aircraft are clearly out of favour, and the very high capacity of the A380 was already starting to prove problematic for most airlines. Developing the 777 and increasing its capacity and efficiency using the latest twin-engine design was an obvious choice. There will be two versions of the 777X, the 777 and the smaller 7778. The 7779, the first to launch, offers a capacity of up to 426 in a two-class configuration. It'll also stretch the fuselage to over 76 meters, making it the longest commercial jet to date. Meanwhile, the smaller 7778 will offer a capacity of around 384. For comparison, the 777-300ER has a capacity of 368. The A350-900 offers a capacity of 315 and the A350-1000 of 369. The four-engine A340-600 offers a typical capacity of 440 and the 747-8 has a typical three-class capacity of 467. The gap between quads and twins is definitely shrinking with the 777X. The smaller 7778 will compete well against the A350-1000, but the 7779 is really in a twin-engine category of its own. It definitely makes a good replacement for the 747, as Boeing has marketed it, with comparable capacity but improved efficiency and a longer range. A lot has changed in the aviation market since the 777X was launched. However, it still suits the shift away from four engines and very large aircraft and will perform well on hub and spoke as well as higher capacity point-to-point -point routes. The delays to its development, although not intended, also fit well with the current slowdown in passenger traffic demand. IATA predicts that airline traffic will not return to 2019 levels until 2024, about when we'll start to see the 777X entering fleets. To power such a large aircraft, the 777X engines are key to achieving its efficient operation. The new General Electric GE9X engines are the largest and most powerful commercial engines ever built. At over 4 metres wide, they're bigger than a 737 fuselage, weigh 9,630 kilograms or 21,230 pounds, and will deliver 105,000 pound-foot of thrust. But with a carbon fibre construction and fewer fan blades, they're actually lighter than the 777's GE90 engines. This contributes to the aircraft's efficiency improvements. Following 5,000 hours of testing and several delays, the GE9X engines finally received FAA certification in September 2020.
With the 747 having been in service for over 50 years, it's no surprise that the 777X is significantly more efficient. It offers a cost per seat that's 33% lower than the 747-400 and 13% lower than the 777-300ER. Such comparisons are difficult to validate until the aircraft is fully in service, of course. But Boeing claims that the 777-9 will offer operating costs up to 11% lower than the A350-1000. Simple Flying looked at this previously and, based on predicted range and fuel burn, determined the two aircraft would have similar fuel burn per seat. The 777X has a massive wingspan of 71.75 metres. While this has several advantages in terms of its efficiency in flight, such a large wingspan can be a problem, as airlines already found with the A380. Its wingspan places it in the largest of the six groups defined by ICAO Aerodrome Code F, which would severely restrict the airports at which it can operate. To reduce the wingspan on the ground and keep it in the lower aerodrome category of E, Boeing has added folding wingtips to the 777X. These reduce the wingspan to 64.82 meters on the ground. Category E maxes out at 65 meters. While there will be a new site at airports, these wingtips are not an entirely new design. Back in the 1990s, Boeing secured a patent for folding wingtips on commercial aircraft. However, a lack of interest from airlines at the time stopped the design from moving ahead. Airbus also secured a patent in 2014, predicting a trend towards larger passenger aircraft, but likewise never took it any further. While the 777X promises a lot, it has suffered several delays and setbacks. Boeing's original plan was to have the new aircraft in the air by 2018 and in service around 2021. That clearly has not happened. There were initial delays due to engine issues and structural testing. Most dramatically, in September 2019, the fuselage was ripped apart during stress testing. Production delays have also crept in due to the slowdown during the pandemic. But the delays are not necessarily bad news for all airlines. While some are keen to start flying the new aircraft, many are, of course, facing their own slowdowns. Some breathing space before new aircraft enter the fleet could be welcome. There has, however, been a reduction in orders. In July 2020, there were 350 orders from eight airlines – Emirates, Qatar Airways, Etihad Airways, Cathay Pacific, Singapore Airlines, ANA, Lufthansa and British Airways. In February 2021, this had fallen to just 191 firm orders. With the largest 777X order of 115 aircraft, Emirates is of particular interest. The airline will use the new aircraft to gradually replace its fleet of A380 aircraft as they retire. With delays to the 777X, the oldest A380s could stay in service for longer. While it still retains its orders, there are signs of frustration. Speaking to Simple Flying in April 2021, Emirates President Sir Tim Clark referred to the Boeing 777X program being in a state of disarray. There have already been delays, but Clark believes that Boeing may not deliver the first Emirates 777X until as late as 2025. He explained to Simple Flying, I did have an engagement a couple of weeks ago with the head of Boeing Civil, Stan Deal. We were discussing mainly things around the 777 program, which is in a state of disarray at the moment. Now, not being able to factor in the 7779 or Dash 8 at this stage is a little bit of a problem, so we had to have a conversation with them. In January 2020, at long last, the 777X started test flights, with four test aircraft now operational. At the end of March 2021, one of these aircraft operated a test flight of just over 10 hours, the longest yet and a good sign of progress. As of April 2021, the latest estimate for the 777X entering service is 2023. Boeing President and CEO David Kaloon explained the latest change in a statement, saying, This schedule and the associated financial impact reflect a number of factors, including an updated assessment of global certification requirements, our latest assessment of COVID-19 impacts on market demands, and discussions with customers with respect to aircraft delivery timing. Which airline will get the first 777X? The answer is currently unclear. 
Originally, Emirates was presumed to be the launch customer. More recently, Lufthansa appeared likely. But now it seems Qatar Airways may have taken this position. According to comments made by its CEO Akbar al Baka in April 2021, the airline could take delivery of its first three aircraft in 2023. Meanwhile, British Airways says it expects its first aircraft in 2024. As well as efficient fleet upgrades, the 777X's cabin upgrades promise a lot for passengers. Several airlines will use the new aircraft to launch or expand new premium products. British Airways has confirmed the 777X will get its new club suite product. This is already available on the A350-100, 78710 and some 777s and is a significant improvement over its dated Club World seating. Qatar Airways has said it's looking at a new ultra-premium first-class cabin on the 777X, possibly to coincide with the retirement of A380s. There's been discussion about a new first-class and possibly business class from Singapore Airlines for the 777X, but this has not yet been confirmed. Boeing has also discussed the possibility of basing a freighter aircraft on the 777 but nothing has been confirmed. Such a development would make sense, though. The plane maker already dominates the cargo market with the 747 and 777 freighters and claims that an additional 1,040 wide-body freighters will be needed in the coming 20 years. There is certainly space for a new freighter that can benefit from the 777X upgrades. In 2019, at the Paris Air Show, Qatar Airways expressed its interest in being the launch customer for a freighter version. The airline already operates 24 Boeing 777 and two 747-8 freighters, but we'll have to wait and see if the 777X joins their ranks. There have been delays, but the 777X is now flying and eagerly awaited by airlines and passengers. What do you think of the type? Will it be a game changer or is it simply another variant? Feel free to discuss your thoughts about the aircraft in the comments. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this.